One of the questions we often get asked is, what do I need to create my Ubiquiti Unify network? Do I have to have the cloud key? Do I need a PoE switch? Uh, do I have to have the gateway security appliance? How does it all fit and work together? So I just thought I'd take a few minutes. We're gonna start from the inside of your network and work outwards. We're just gonna talk about some of the components that you need um, to make a wireless network. So your first point really, you're gonna talk, we're gonna talk about is your access point. Let me just reach back and grab this. Um, this is um, actually happens to be a wireless six light, but it's the same size as the Nano HD um, and the AC light. Um, want to see some more videos on what this does and what it's about, you'll find it on our website. But this is your access point. In simple terms, you're going to think of your Wi-Fi signal coming out of this in a dome shape. So people want to know, can I put this on a cabinet to use it? Yes, you can. It has less um, radio frequency being sent behind it, um, but you can. So I, if I was going to mount this, I'm going to mount it a little bit lower down on a cupboard pointing upwards. If I've just got a cupboard to lie it on, so my signal comes out, everything above it, is gonna get good Wi-Fi. Everything that below it is gonna get some Wi-Fi. The other option we've got, maybe we wanna mount this on a wall. Again, think of the, uh, the RF signal coming out as a dome. So as we go forward, we're gonna get good Wi-Fi signal. At the tops here, we're gonna lose a little bit. At the bottom, we're gonna lose a little bit. The optimal place of this, as you imagine, is on a ceiling like this. So out comes our dome and it comes down and spreads out evenly down to the ground. But there's nothing to say that can't work on top of a cupboard. Um, it will work fine. There's nothing to say you can't put it on a wall. Ideal position is up there on the ceiling. So how do you uh, power this? That's the next question. So you've got your access point. Well, most of the access points, this is a slight different, but most of the access points will come with a power over ethernet injector. Now you may have heard about power over ethernet. Every switch is not power over ethernet enabled. So just because you have a switch doesn't mean that it will send out power. What does power over ethernet mean? Well, it takes the pins four and five, the center um, uh, cables in your CAT6 or CAT5e connection, and it allows a system to put power down it. So if we have a look at this injector, you'll see we've got uh, mains in this side, and we've got two connectors out. We've got a, a PoE and we've got a LAN. So what, we, what would we do? We would take the LAN connection. That's going to be a connection from our switch, which we'll talk about in a minute, or our router. That's going to go in this side. We're going to plug in mains on this side. Now we have data coming in and mains coming in. We're going to take then an Ethernet cable and plug that into the PoE port. Now, that Ethernet cable can be up to 100 meters in length. So ideally, if you're going to put this, if you've got your access point and you think you're going to mount it on a ceiling somewhere, well, your cable can be run all the way back now to where you maybe have your uh, little switch or your comms cupboard um, or whatever it is. So that's what a power over Ethernet injector does. It injects the power and the data together. It mixes them to create one um, output that's used over one long Ethernet cable. That is how this is powered. So all the single packs, by the wireless six versions um, come with a PoE injector. So if you had four in your house, four access points, you'll end up with four PoE injectors. So four mains power, um, four cables plugged into a switch or a router and four cables running out to your access point. Now, can you improve that and make that simpler? Yes, you can. You can buy a power over ethernet switch. So this is an example, this is the Ubiquiti um, USW Lite 16. So what does this do? As you can see, it has mains power in. Eight of the ports on here already doing the mixing job that this little box is doing. So eight of these ports are already set to send out power and data together. Now people then ask, but what if I want to plug a device that isn't power over ethernet enabled into it? That's okay. The, power, the device that's connecting to will only request power if it knows it can draw power. So you can use this switch to um, plug normal devices, a computer in, anything like that, as well as a device that needs PoE, which could be a VoIP phone, could be the cloud key we're gonna look at in a moment, could be an access point. So there's quite a few different options, but this, maybe if you've got more than two access points, is something certainly worthwhile. And if you're buying a switch um, because you need some ports, then do consider buying a PoE switch. 
So here we go, we've got our access point, we've maybe mounted it on a ceiling. We've got a long cable that's running back to our switch, which is powering it. Or maybe, as we talked about, you've just got um, your uh, power over ethernet injector and that's plugged into your router that you already have. Or maybe a normal uh, non-POE switch. So, access points needed. Everything that you need um, to set this up, you can download um, from uh, ui.com forward slash downloads and you can get the uh, Ubiquiti controller for Mac, Windows and Linux there. Um, it needs to be set up once. There is also an app that you can use to uh, set the access point up as well. Now you need to bear in mind that if you don't use the cloud key, then you can still set these up, but they are linked to the app or the computer that you set the software up on originally. So if you've put, done a lovely config, put six of these around your property, and then in two years time, you realize you wanna make some changes, but that old laptop's expired and you've thrown it out, all right, the only option you will have is to go back and factory reset. You'll need to take these off the ceiling, put the pin in to reset them, um, and then set them up afresh. So I would recommend the cloud key if you can. The cloud key we'll look at in a moment is a centralized management system that that makes it a little bit easier to set up. But you don't need anything else other than the access point and a PoE injector to get uh, Wi-Fi uh, going. So then we moved on to the switch. This again can be set up, configured and managed from um, a computer or the app using the same Unify controller or you can use the cloud key. So what is the cloud key? Well, the cloud key is a little, this is the Gen 1, there's some different versions of these around as well. It's a mini computer. Um, it has an SD card in it. Um, it's PoE powered, so you do need a PoE injector separately or a PoE switch. So we may plug this into one of the uh, PoE uh, ports here. Let's just plug this in here. All right, and this is my little setup now. What does this do? This runs all of the software that you can download from Ubiquiti's website. On this little one, this only powers the um, Unify controller, so it can manage all the Unify switches, all the Unify um, access points, and the USG. What's this doing? It's on all of the time. You can connect this to the free um, online portal um, Unify portal, which essentially means that from your mobile phone or from a computer, you can get remote access back into your network and make changes to your access points, to your switches, and then if you have the uh, gateway security appliance, you can actually see the traffic that's going through your network as well. So the cloud key is an optional extra, but if you can, certainly even just get this version, um, the UC-CK, um, this is really worth it, it's about $110. Um, and it makes the setup and continual management of your network. Because as long as this is here, you can log in and make changes. It doesn't matter which mobile phone you set things up on. It doesn't matter which computer you set things up on. Um, if you are doing this in more of a business situation or a, a motel or somewhere else like that, and you're going to be using what's called a guest Wi-Fi, so you're allowing people to authenticate um, and then get free access, you do need the cloud key running um, to be able to do that or the software running permanently on a server, so I'd suggest the Cloud Key. There are a couple of other versions of the Cloud Key, the Gen 2, the Gen 2 Plus, which has a hard drive built in it, that allows you to run video, the a Unified Video, Unified Access, um, and Unified Controller, and then you'll find in the UDM, um, there is also a Cloud Key component, and in the UDM Pro um, as well. So that is what the Cloud Key is, helps you control and do the setup, so worthwhile purchasing um, if you want a longer term solution. So there we've gone. We've gone with the access point here um, cabled to your switch or to a PoE injector. We've talked about uh, the cloud key it needs to be power over ethernet powered. So you need a PoE injector or to be plugged directly into a PoE switch like we've uh, done here. All right, so we're moving through our network now. Now we're moving out to our routers. So it depends again on what network um, infrastructure you have, how your broadband um, is provided. So if you've got fiber to the property and you've actually got a termination box, maybe it's in your garage, then you can plug directly into um, a little device like the Gateway Security Appliance. This is like a mini firewall. It runs a free intrusion prevention service, but what does it add extra? Again, it's not a, um, a required component, it's an optional component. 
It allows you to set rules and some firewalling policies. It allows you to see the applications that are flowing through your system. It's managed from the cloud key or the permanently running um, software. Really, if you do have the USG, the Unified Gateway Security Appliance, um, you need to have the gateway because it, uh, the cloud key because it's sending data back to it all of the time. So if you want reporting, you want to see what applications are flowing through there, um, to a certain extent what the kids are looking at, if you're doing this in a home environment, maybe set some rules like that, or in a business you want to be able to shape some of the traffic, um, then you really want the USG, um, the small unit, there's a USG Pro 4, which is the first rack mount, there's a larger uh, rack mount, or you could go for the UDM, uh, which has it built in, um, or the UDM Pro, which again has the gateway security Board, uh, built in. It's so quite a few components there. So this would plug directly in. If you have um, what we would call VDSL, so fiber to the node, and then it comes in over copper, um, then maybe you'd have a modem in front of that. This is a uh, Draytech um, DV130 VDSL modem. Just has one port in and one port out, one port to the uh, um, copper connection, one port uh, to your USG. You can set this in what's called pass-through mode and then you can use the USG and you can put your username and password for your broadband service into your USG and this just passes the connection um, through. So quite a few components there, um, but hopefully that overview was useful. So let's maybe come from the outside of your network in, depending on your connection, you're gonna have a router, um, which you may already have um, from your provider. What would I suggest? You turn the wireless off on that, you're creating a ubiquity unified network. So let the router just do routing. So you're going to turn the wireless off, just let it do routing. You may plug that into the optional Unify um, Ubiquity Gateway Security Appliance. That might be um, there if you want some firewalling, some ongoing protection and visibility. But again, an optional component. From that, um, you're going to plug uh, the USG into a switch. It might be that your router already um, has a number of switch ports, in which case uh, you don't need a switch. Otherwise, look at a switch. Um, I would suggest that maybe has some PoE ports just to make it easier for you. Remember, we then have the cloud key. The cloud key is there if you want to have easy, um, returnable management and access from outside of your network, but it is an optional extra. The app and the free software is available uh, from downloads. Uh, for download from either ui.com forward slash downloads um, or from your various store, the Apple um, Play Store or sorry, the Google Play Store or the um, App Store. All right, so your switch, potentially your cloud key, control it all, and then eventually that's going to run through um, to your access point. Here's just an example of uh, ceiling mounted, but there are wall mounted um, and other options as well. So hopefully that's been uh, useful just to give you a run through of the components to create a unified network. Remember, the gateway security appliance is not required. It's an optional and gives extra good features. The cloud key is not required, but does make it easier uh, to manage. You will need a PoE injector as a minimum, like we talked about here, to power your access points, and that generally comes with the access points, or you can use a PoE switch like this one um, to actually power them. So hopefully that's been useful.